Hey guys, welcome to the next lecture. So today I want to uh, work up with you guys on the concept of matrices. For in fact, next couple of uh, videos, we will be discussing certain things about uh, matrices and determinants. It's a very important topic from exam point of view and any entrance point of view. So here are the couple of questions that I want to discuss today. If A is a singular matrix, then a joint A is singular, non-singular, symmetric, or not defined. So first of all, in this question, we got to understand what do you mean by matrix being singular? So in case the determinant of a matrix is zero, then we call that matrix singular. And if the determinant is not equal to zero, then we call it non-singular. So singularity of a matrix means its determinant is zero. So clearly here, what are we given? We are given that the determinant of A is zero. What we need to figure out is, then a joint A is singular, non-singular, symmetric, not defined. So I'm going to start with the property of singular uh, by checking singularity. So determinant, that means we want to check, looking at the first and second option, we want to check whether a joint A is singular or not. That is, the determinant of a joint A is equal to zero or not. That's what we want to check, right? Now, the property that we all must recall at this junction is the relation of a joint A to a determinant. What is it? So, A multiplied by a joint A, the matrix A multiplied by a joint A is equal to the determinant of A. In matrix terms, if I talk about A multiplied by a joint A. That's a matrix, okay? And determinant is a number. So if I may write it down as equality of two matrices, so I would write down determinant A into I. Now suppose, let's suppose that A is N cross N. We're talking about square matrices here since we're talking about determinants a lot. So A is N cross N. Let us, let, let's take that supposition. That means A multiplied by a joint A. If I take the determinant of that, I will have determinant of A multiplied by a joint A. And that's going to be equal to the determinant of determinant A into I. Now, determinant A is just a number. So, it could be like, say, 2, 3. It's just a determinant, right? So, determinant of a matrix, which is not 0. That is something that we know because, uh, which is 0 actually, that we, we, we know that it's 0, but we will apply that later. Now, <clears throat> determinant, all I'm trying to basically tell you is, this is like determinant of, say, you know, 3 times I, determinant of, for two times i and so on and so forth. So when you try to take out the number outside the determinant, what do you actually take out? Outside the de determinant depends on the order because it's like taking out three from each row or each column, right? So it depends on how many rows you have, how many columns you have. So here it will be determinant a to the power n into determinant i. And here, we know the property of determinants that you can break the product. So what are we using? We're using two things here. Number one, we're using that A is order n. Number two, we are using that determinant of A into B is determinant A into determinant B. Okay? So hence, what we get is that a joint A, the determinant of a joint A is nothing but 
determinant of a to the power n minus 1 because this determinant a and a to the power determinant a to the power n will one one of the powers will cancel out right now since a is singular because determinant a is equal to 0 that implies that determinant of a joint a is equal to 0 now why i'm doing this question with you guys is also for the property that you must always remember one of the properties of a joint a determinant of a joint a when a is n cross n then determinant of a joint a will turn out to be determinant of a to the power n minus 1 the process of that proof is the same it's just that i i'm deliberately i used that the determinant of a is zero in the end so this is this is the property that i wanted to discuss and based on similar kind of concept let's work on another question if a is the matrix a0000 a0 a that that is it's a diagonal matrix as you can see then the value of determinant a multiplied by determinant of joint a is a cube a to the power 6 a to the power 9 a to the power 27 you must pause at this junction and try it out yourself if you understood the previous question and the property, then you can directly actually find out the answer here. So what we did there was that A into a joint A is basically determinant A. And if I may write it down in matrix formulation, then I should multiply with determinant A, I should multiply I, which gave us the fact that determinant A, a joint A is determinant A to the power n because the order of uh, of a is n so the order of i is also n okay and this is nothing but determinant a into determinant of a joint a and that turns out to be determinant a to the power n in this question what is determinant a in this question, determinant A, it's a diagonal matrix. So just the product of the diagonal entries, which is A cube, A into A into A. And secondly, what is N? N is 3 because it's a 3 cross 3 matrix. So order is 3. So which means the answer to our question, determinant A into determinant a joint A will be equal to A cube to the power Three. So that means it's a to the power 9. It's The correct answer is option C, a to the power 9. And the correct option for the previous question was A, that the determinant of a joint A is also 0. So option A. Thank you very much. I hope this helps.